In Greek mythology, Achilles is considered to be one of the greatest heroes, a name that has been passed down through the ages, associated with the Trojan War, the wrath of the gods, and a tragic destiny. Today we are going to delve deeply into the history of Achilles, covering topics such as his beginnings, his participation in the Trojan War, his legendary fury, and eventually, his downfall. Continue to be here with us as we dispel the myths, the wars, and the legacy of the magnificent Achilles. To begin, let's go back to the source. Not only was Achilles a mortal, but he was also born of divine and human blood. No ordinary mortal. A mortal monarch of the Myrmidons, a race of strong warriors, Peleus was his father. He was a Myrmidon. However, what about his mother? Thetis, a sea nymph, or according to some accounts, a goddess, was who he called his mother. Zeus, the monarch of the gods, and Poseidon, the god of the sea, are said to have had a mutual passion for Thetis, according to the narrative. However, they were cautioned by a prophecy that the son of Thetis would surpass his father in terms of greatness and become a hero whose name would live for eternity. In order to avoid the possibility of having a child who could perhaps overthrow them, the gods made the decision to marry Thetis off to a mortal. Achilles was born as a result of this connection, but Thetis was not pleased with the fact that her son would eventually die. It was her hope that he would be unbeatable. According to the most well-known tale concerning Achilles, she is said to have submerged him in the river Styx, which is the very river that divides the world of the living from the underworld. He was protected from harm by the seas, with the exception of one spot, his heel, which was where Thetis had grabbed him. This Achilles' heel would later become his downfall, but more on that in a bit. Achilles did not simply have a natural talent for fighting. He was also trained by the very finest, the knowledgeable centaur Chiron, who was recognized for rearing and instructing a large number of Greek heroes, took him in when he was a little child. In the course of Chiron's instruction, Achilles gained knowledge in every field, from fighting to music and even medicine. So from the beginning, Achilles was destined for greatness. But greatness often comes with a price. I'm sure you would agree. Now we get to the point of the story where Achilles actually set himself apart, the Trojan War. In this very place, his mythology is firmly established. For you see, the conflict began over something that has been around since the beginning of time, love, jealousy, and retribution. The story begins with Paris, a prince of Troy, kidnapping Helen, the wife of Menelaus, king of Sparta, or eloping with her, depending on how you interpret the myth. This is the beginning of everything. Because of this, there was a significant diplomatic crisis, and Agamemnon, Menelaus' brother, made the decision to bring together all of the Greek kings in order to begin a war against Troy. In this moment, when it came to putting up the Greek army, Achilles was an indispensable component. If not the greatest warrior of all time, he was certainly the best warrior of all time. There is, however, a catch. It was clear to Thetis, Achilles' mother, that if her son traveled to Troy, he would inevitably meet his end there. In an effort to conceal him, she pretended to be a young girl when she was on the island of Skyros. But Achilles was unable to conceal himself for an infinite amount of time. By placing weapons in front of Achilles, Odysseus, another renowned warrior, was able to deceive Achilles into exposing his true identity. And with that, Achilles joined the Greeks in their war against Troy. But even with a hero like Achilles on their side, the Trojan War would last for ten long years, the wrath of Achilles. A significant disagreement occurred between Achilles and Agamemnon, the commander of the Greek soldiers, at an early stage in the conflict. Following a successful raid, Agamemnon abducted a woman named Chryseis as a prize. However, when her father, who was a priest of Apollo, begged that she be returned. Apollo attacked the Greeks with a disease. Although Agamemnon was compelled to return her, he made the decision to steal Achilles' prize instead, which was a woman named Briseis. This was an act of arrogance on his part. Moreover, it was a really serious error. The Iliad conducts a thorough investigation into Achilles' character at this point. It was because of his immense pride and rage that he was willing to let his fellow soldiers to perish in order to demonstrate his point. On the other hand, 
such pride would come with a significant cost. Patroclus' death and Achilles' revenge. The relationship that Achilles had with Patroclus, who was both his closest friend and, according to certain interpretations, his lover, was one of the most important relationships in his life. Patroclus was unable to bear the knowledge that the Greeks were suffering, so he pleaded with Achilles to allow him to go into combat while wearing Achilles' armor. Achilles consented, but he issued strong directives, which were as follows. Drive the Trojans back, but do not pursue them. Patroclus, on the other hand, became engulfed in the intensity of the conflict and pushed himself beyond his limits, ultimately engaging in a confrontation with Hector, the Prince of Troy. In the mistaken belief that Patroclus was Achilles, Hector took Patroclus' life. As soon as Achilles found out that his friend had passed away, his sadness transformed into a relentless and unrestrained wrath. Achilles went back into battle with the intention of ultimately killing Hector. He also managed to kill Hector. One of the most well-known battles in Greek mythology took place when Achilles pursued Hector all the way around the walls of Troy until he was eventually able to capture him. Achilles took the life of Hector and then, as a cruel act of retribution, dragged his body behind his chariot. The significance of this moment lies in the fact that it not only demonstrates Achilles' rapid plunge into fury, but also emphasizes his humanity. Immediately following this, King Priam, the father of Hector, made his way to Achilles in the middle of the night and begged him to return the body of his missing son. Achilles finally gave in and returned Hector's body after being moved by Priam's valor and being reminded of his own father. Something that makes Achilles such a complicated figure is the moment of compassion that he displays in the middle of the slaughter. Not only was he a murderous machine, but he was also a man who was capable of experiencing intense wrath as well as profound empathy. The death of Achilles. Hector's death did not prevent Achilles from continuing to battle in the Trojan War. Nonetheless, his fate was already decided. Achilles was destined to perish in Troy, according to the prophecy, and the gods never tell lies. Hector's brother Paris was the one who ultimately brought Achilles to his death. But Paris did not slay Achilles in a battle of legendary proportions. Rather, he killed him with an arrow that was guided by the god Apollo. The shot hit Achilles in his heel, which was the sole possible weak spot on his body. The mighty Achilles, a hero who was brought down by a single flaw, eventually succumbed to his defeat. In the event that the Greeks were successful in retrieving his body, a hero's burial was held for him. For the purpose of ensuring that they would remain together even after death, his ashes were combined with those of his beloved Patroclus. Achilles' passing marked the beginning of the end of the Trojan War nonetheless. His legacy continued to carry on beyond his death. It became common knowledge that his name was connected with the most powerful warrior, a representation of both greatness and fragility. The question is, why does the story of Achilles still speak to us today? Why does he continue to be such a well-known figure? His intricacy is a contributing factor. There is more to Achilles than just a one-dimensional hero. Pride, love, grief, and fury are the emotions that drive him as a man. Despite the fact that he is practically invincible, he nonetheless possesses a very human quality. There are also enduring themes that are explored throughout his narrative, such as the pursuit of glory, the certainty of death, and the consequences of rage that is not contained. Over the course of several centuries, Achilles has been depicted in a wide variety of works of art and literature, ranging from ancient Greek pottery to contemporary films such as Troy, the clips you're watching now in which Brad Pitt plays the role of Achilles. In each and every retelling, he continues to be a figure that is larger than life, a warrior who epitomizes both the goodness and the evil that is inherent in humanity. That's the story of Achilles, one of the most legendary figures in all of mythology. What do you think of his story? Do you see him as a hero, a tragic figure, or something in between? Let me know in the comments. And if you found this in-depth exploration of Achilles' world to be enjoyable, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel for other mythology examinations, and make sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss our next video. I appreciate you taking the time to watch until next time.